Okay, we're going to start off this morning with how we make a bell from a compressed gas cylinder, okay? This is a carbon dioxide tank. First thing we did was we took, and if you'll notice, we welded a piece of 4x4 four four angle iron to the welding table, okay? We've taken the tank overnight, we opened the valve and we let it vent out to air all night, okay? Now, we've taken two pairs of chain grip vice grips and we've taken them and we've clamped the tank to the piece of angle iron. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this pipe wrench and we're going to take the, the valve out of the tank, okay? They're kind of hard to hold on to, which is why we have put it on. We've built the jig for it, okay? Okay, we're going to grab a hold of it now with the pipe wrench. We're going to pull on it. We're going to take the valve out of it, okay? Said it's very important that you let it vent to the atmosphere the night before. You don't want to hook onto that and go to take it out and find out you've still got pressure on it. It's not a good thing. Okay. So there we are. We have the valve out of it. Okay, we've got the valve out of the second one. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the C clamps or the Chain vice grips off. He said, there's the, there's the jig. It's just a piece of angle iron with four tack welds. If you look at it, four tack welds holding it to the table. Now we're going to grind those tack welds and knock out loose. Okay, now that we've got the tack welds ground, ground off on one side, we just take the hammer and we break it loose. Now we're going to grind those welds, those tack welds off so that they won't be in the way while we're working on the welding table. I do this all the time. Okay, the tack welds are ground off so our bench is clean and we're ready to start working on cutting the cylinders. Okay, this drop here is from a small fab job I did, and it was left over. It's just a piece of C-channel. And this is what I set the cylinders in on their side so that I can mark them, and uh, I, can, I can cut them without them rolling around on me. A piece of channel iron will work. Just two pieces of steel on each side to keep them from rolling. Just something to keep them rolling around. The easier you can make it for you, the better off you are. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to kind of figure out where we want to mark the bell at. Okay, for the bell. Make, mark the tank for the bell. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to look at this bell. Okay, and I'm going to mark it. I think I want it about right here. Okay. Not real scientific. Now we're going to lay the bell in the track there, in the C-channel. And we're going to get ready to cut it. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at our dimension. Okay? So, if we come up here and we look, we're right at 12 inches on our mark from the top of our tank, just eyeballing it. We're not making a rocket ship, okay? So, we're not going to get real wild with it but we're about 12 inches. Now we're going to take and we're going to take a wire brush and we're going to clean up at 12 inches all the way around that tank and then we're going to cut it. Now, if you look, I'm going wide, okay? I go from about 12 inches, actually probably about 11 inches, to about 15 inches. That way, if I change my mind and I decide I want uh, to go a little longer or a little shorter, 
I can do that without having to get the grinder back out. So we're going to finish uh, wire brushing this and getting the paint off of it, and then we'll be back. Okay, we have the tank wire brushed where we're fixing to cut it. We used a knotted wire wheel. Okay, I prefer the knotted wire wheels because they don't throw as many wires, but they're still going to pro uh, throw wires. Uh, you need to remember to wear uh, eye protection and to wear gloves when you uh, wire brush that paint off. So be sure to wear your PPE. So we're going to stand back here and we're going to look at the bell one last time. We're going to look at it from several angles, or the cylinder from several angles. And we're going to take our Sharpie again and we're going to mark it where we want it. And I think I want it a little longer than I had it. I think we're going to mark it right in here. We're going to stand back and look at our mark. And that gives us a little more room to draw our design. You can always cut a little off. It's harder to add more to it than it is to cut it off. Okay, so that's where we're going to cut it at. Now we're going to show you how we mark it to cut it. This is what we're going to use to mark the bell. All it is, is it's an old sanding belt that broke in half. And now I use it to wrap it around the bell to mark the bell. It goes around the bell or around the cylinder probably two and a half times. So we're going to wrap it around the cylinder and then we're going to mark it with a sharpie. So we take it, we wrap it around, okay, and I'm going to finish right back. Now if you look at it, okay, I am on, see if we can see it. Can't hardly see it, but I'm on my mark. Okay, and the, it wraps all the way around the tank. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a sharpie and I'm going to go around this side of it, all the way around, staying up against the belt. Now we have the bell marked, or the tank marked. Okay, it's marked all the way around. And it's a good, straight, even line. Okay. So, now we're going to get ready to cut the bell. We're going to use a Hypertherm 380 plasma cutter. You can use an oxy-settling rig. And actually, if you're a patient man and you're careful, you can cut them with a cutoff wheel or several cutoff wheels on a four and a half inch grinder. So let me get ready and we'll cut the bell. Okay, we put the camera in the tripod now so that I can work with both hands free. What we're going to do now is we're going to take the plasma cutter and we're going to cut the bell. Like I said, you can do this with an oxy settling rig. You can do this with cutoff wheels. I just have to have the plasma cutter and I'm going to use the plasma cutter. Now one thing you need to remember before you cut these bells or these cylinders is you need to be very careful with what's been in them before. And if it's been a flammable gas, you need to wash them out real good with water. We're talking fill it up with water two or three times, dump the water out. Preferably, if you can, fill them back up with water before you make the first cut and penetrate the side of the cylinder. This is a uh, carbon dioxide tank. It's not a flammable gas, but we went ahead and we washed it out early. So we're going to cut the bell. As we cut, we rotate it, which is where our piece of detail comes in handy. And then we have the tank cut. And now that we have the tank cut, we have to clean it up and get it ready to draw the seam off. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put it on the belt uh, grinder. We're going to clean up this edge, and we're going to clean off the rest of the paint. So when I set this up, I get my gloves and my eye protection, and I 
Put me a stool here about the same height as the belt, Sandra. That way I've got something to rest the bell on while I'm working because it is quite heavy. So we're going to start with the outer edge here. We're going to grind it and then we're going to work on the side. I don't know how well it'll show up in the picture, but if you look at the inside of the bell, okay, at the inside, so you'll see a jagged edge up here, this jagged edge. That's dross from where we cut it, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to take a chisel from the inside, we're going to knock that off of it. It comes off there real easy. A lot quicker to try to grind it off, and a lot cheaper to try to grind it off. So we got that dross edge knocked off. Now we're going to go back to center. Sure, the bell cleaned up the paint off of it. We're going to take it over to the bench and we're going to finish cleaning it up. You can clean the whole bell with a four and a half inch grinder or whatever else you choose to clean it with. But I used the belt sander to clean the bell with prior to the, to the grinder because I find it quicker and easier and I have the tools. But if you don't have the tools, a four and a half inch grinder with a knotted wire wheel will do a good job on it. We have it cleaned up now, but I'm still not happy with the finish of the tank, so we're going to go back over to Bell Center for a little bit. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to come over here, and we're going to sit down with our nice shiny bell. We're going to pop our feet up. And we're going to take our handy dandy Sharpie again. And we're going to sit here and we're going to freehand our scene into our bell. Archie Bob. What are you doing, buddy? Come see me. Give me a minute. Sometimes we get interrupted, okay? You can got be petted, don't you, bro? You can got be petted. You want a camera? So we just freehand this on here, and we're just giving ourselves an idea of where we want to go. This is a tree. You want to draw a flag. Kind of like that. And we want to draw a golf green because this is supposed to be a bell with a golf theme. And over here we're going to put the sun because we want a sunny day for a golf out. See, we're freehanded here. We have the tree. Just put a brace of pine trees. 
just put a brace of kind of break it up between the sun and the moon. So we got trees, we got a golf course. So we've got our sign, our, our, our basic design drawn on. Free hands sitting on our butt in the chair. Okay, we've got our design in our bell the way we want it. So now we're going to go over here and we're going to weld the design on the bell. I turned the welder down to about an eighth inch setting of 17.4 by 230. I'm using a Millimatic 252. So we're going to start welding. I have uh, three bright lights that shine down onto the bell while I'm doing this. It's hard to see the Sharpie while you're welding. So it takes a little time, it takes a little concentration. Got the design we want. We got a lot of cleanup to do. Because I don't know if you can see it from there. I'll bring it up where you can see it. But basically, the welding turned our bell black in a lot of areas. But there's our golf scene. There's the name. Okay. There's the pine trees. There's the moon, there's the tree again, and there's the cloud and the sun. Okay, so what we have here is we have a piece, I don't know whether we'll be able to show it to you or not, but this is a piece of inch and a quarter round stock, and it's approximately two and a quarter inches long, okay, is what that is. Like that, it's it's actually inch and a quarter diameter. So we're going to take this and we're going to put it in the forge. We're going to heat it up, and then we're going to drive it down on itself, and we're going to make it kind of like a big metal pancake, actually small metal pancake, and we're going to make the clapper out of it. So that's what we're going to do next. At this point, the sound's probably going to suck real bad.
just a little over half an inch. Okay, so we've got our three pieces that we need. We've got a ring to hang it by. We have the clapper that we forged, and we have the leaf for the end of the piece of leather holding the clapper. So we're going to start putting the bell together now. So what we're going to do, first we're going to weld the ring in, and then we're going to decorate the ring with weld. And then we're going to get a leather piece out and we're going to put the leather piece on here. We're going to thread it through the clapper, tie a knot in it where it needs to be, and then we're going to hook the leaf to it. So once again, the first thing we want to do is we want to spray this down with a ribble, a liberal dosage of anti-spatter spray. Now we're going to weld that the bell. Okay, I always usually, usually try to make decoration on it with just some texture and put like some little roots on it here like you grab it onto the bell. Just kind of my personal thing. I don't like just a plain ring. Uh, we'll clean that up with a with a uh, wire brush here in just a minute. So we've got that done. We're gonna let it cool a little bit. So we're gonna clean it off with a wire brush. Still have the water brush hooked up. So. so we have the bell hanging ring on there. We have the bell basically done. So now I'm going to take a piece of leather and I'm going to tie it to the bottom of the ring where we drill the hole in it. I'm going to bring it down, I'm going to measure, I'm going to slide the clapper up on the leather, I'm going to tie a knot so the clapper is just above the lip of the bell. I like it down fairly low. And I'm going to come on down about another six inches to where the leaf hangs down real good. I'm going to tie the leaf onto it so you grab the leaf and you can ring the bell. So that's what we're going to do next. This is looking inside the bell. You can see from the side, you can see that the, the ring's sticking through and where I've tied the knot on to the ring to hold the piece of leather. Then if you look, you can see the clapper right here. We've tied a knot on the back side of the clapper. The clapper comes down to within about an inch, inch and a quarter of the bottom. It's got a knot tied in it to keep it from going any further. Then you come on down, and we have the leaf to ring the bell with. So, let's get it hung up and see what it sounds like. Okay, here's our bell. The only thing we haven't done is we haven't painted it yet. But let's go around. Let's take a look at the finished bell. There's the name, Bon Trager. There's the moon. Coming up on the tree, there's the tree with the leaves on it, and we got to kind of wander around here. Okay, we come on around, and you can't see it very well, but that's our our golf green with the flag, and we have the clouds and the sun. And there's the start of the Bontrager name there with a cart path going through the Bontrager name. And there is our pine trees. Okay. Now we haven't heard the, the bell ring yet. 
So let's hear it ring for the first time. Got quite a ring to it, doesn't it? And that's how you make a bell. I hope it gives you an idea of how to make a bell.